We're talking about yeah. prophethood, the concept of prophethood, and we'll apply it to Muhammad, whether Muhammad is a prophet of God or not. Thank you. So, the book of Isaiah, same book, chapter 29, verse 12, we have a verse. It states, when the book is given to the one who is not learned, and it is said to him, read, he will say, I am not learned. And when the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was in the cave of Hira, he received a man, an, a, a, an angel in uh, in the shape of man, and he said, he came and he said, Iqra, read, and Muhammad said, Ma ana biqari'in, I am not learned. This is what you call specific. Okay. Okay, I'll return as well. Yes. But the Lord have poured out upon you the spirit of the deep sleep, and have closed your eyes, the prophets, and your And the prophets. Let me finish. Prophet. Read Isaiah. And show us Isaiah 29, 12. Yeah. Live, live, live. And the book is delivered to him. Him. Yeah. That is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee, and he, and he say it, I am not learned. Many people have a misconception that Islam is a new religion that came into existence 1400 years ago, and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the founder of this religion. In fact, Islam is there since time immemorial, since man set foot on this earth. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not the founder of this religion, but he is the last and final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God. To whom was revealed the last and final message, the glorious Quran. Small talk, very small talk. Scientists have long studied how various creatures communicate. Dolphins in the water, chimpanzees on land, birds in flight. But insects, could they possibly have anything to say? Well, when it comes to the tiny ant, it turns out the answer may be yes. Here's Nick Watt. Ants live in highly structured societies. They are masters of architecture and even agriculture. And now, scientists tell us, ants actually talk to each other. Were you surprised by what you found? We were. Yes, we were surprised. <laughs> Last, just last week, I was in a conversation with an Orientalist scholar, non-Muslim Islamic studies scholar. And their biggest thing, I don't know if you saw this documentary, I think it was on the Discovery Channel, if I'm not mistaken, on the Qur'an. And they talked about how the Qur'an is not actually preserved, and it's all these different parchments, and they found this other version of it, the Dead Sea Scrolls, right? And it's missing some surahs, and all of this kind of stuff. Is the Qur'an really what it was then, or is this just a, you know, a myth that the Qur'an we have now is the same as then? Let me tell you something about the Western textual criticism of the Qur'an. These people are incredibly smart at pulling off scams. And they sell a scam really well. And if you don't know the scam, you'll say, Oh my God, makes sense. He's got a PhD, he must be telling the truth. It's on TV, how can that be wrong? Right? That's our standard at this point, the level of intellectual depth the, the Ummah has. Right? I saw this documentary and it shook my Iman. Seriously, it should have made you laugh. It should have made you laugh. When somebody tries to spit at the sun, it comes back on their own face. That's what they did. They spit on their own face. Let me tell you something about this. In the West, I'll start very logically, because this is again a very important concept for all of us to have that gives us confidence in deen. When you want to preserve a document, there are two ways. Written archive and oral tradition. 
There are only two ways of preserving a document historically. What are they again? Written archive or oral tradition. Written archive means you write it down. Oral tradition means you memorize it and make somebody else memorize it and make somebody else memorize it and that's how it's passed down. Okay. According to Western standards and logical standards, which of these is a safer, do you know? Written archive. Written archive is safer. Why is it safer? Even though both have criticisms. If I start at that corner, I say to one brother, brother, I'm going to whisper something in your ear. I want you to whisper it to the next person. I whisper in his ear, Ahmed punched Kareem. Okay, Ahmed punched Kareem in the stomach. That's all I told him. Ahmed punched Kareem in the stomach. He whispers it to the next brother, then the next brother, then the next brother whispers it to the next, and the next. By the time we get over there, Ahmed gutted Kareem's stomach out, burnt his house down, and then blew up the neighborhood. Okay? Every person adds 1%. And by the time you go through 500 people, how much has been added? 500%. This is an error of oral communication. It's a problem of oral communication. Okay? Even if you change one word, and the next change changes just one word, those one words can add up. They can add up. So the argument in Western criticism is, an oral tradition goes through lots of changes. Logical, very logical. Okay, let's keep that in the back of your mind. Now come to written tradition. We di they didn't have Xerox back then. They didn't have scanners back then either. So if you have a book, and you wrote it out, the only way to duplicate it is what? Write another one. If you are, and is it handwritten or machine written? Handwritten. And in handwritten archives, is it possible you made a mistake? It's possible. And then there's, this book has one mistake, and then this book with one mistake went, and it got duplicated, is it possible another mistake will happen? It's possible, right? These are possibilities, and these guys love talking about possibilities, let me tell you. Right? So now they say, okay, and by the way, in the West, when they talk about historical documents, uh, do they pride themselves over oral traditions or written traditions in the West? Written traditions. So their understanding of something properly documented has to be what? Written. So they come to the Qur'an with the understanding that the only way the Qur'an was preserved is by what? Writing. By writing. Now, if we go by their... Let's agree with their argument. For, in the beginning, let's agree with their argument. Okay? If we go by their argument, if the Qur'an was memorized, and then person A helped person B memorize, but person B memorized it a little bit differently. And then they went and taught person C, and they memorized it also a little bit differently. Over time, would you have less variation, or would you have more variation? You would have more variation. And if the Qur'an is written down, and then it goes to another town, another copy, another copy, is it possible variations will also increase? This is a historical fact. If you're going to, especially not even stay in the same town, they're not even on the same continent. And there's no one-way flights back then either. So you're months and months and months apart. And you can't even make a phone call and say, no, you've got the wrong version. If you want to get the information to them, you've got the wrong version, you're going to be traveling for six months. And in those six months, it may have sped, spread even more. In other words, if there is one variation, it can become 10,000 variations without the ability to control the information. You understand? And how long has this spreading of information been going on? 1,400 years plus. In other words, by going purely by Western standards, we should have so many versions of the Qur'an, they should be in the millions. No two people can probably have the same Qur'an if we go by their standards. Now come to our time. You take a kid who memorized Qur'an in Jiang province, China. And then you take a kid who memorized Qur'an in Somalia. And you take a kid who memorized Qur'an at IQA. And they're hanging out together one day. And one is reciting Baqarah. And the, one speaks Chinese, one speaks Somali, right? One speaks English. They can't talk to each other, but they recite, one's reciting Baqarah, can the other one correct him? They can. The fact that the Qur'an was primarily preserved by making it easy to remember. There is no document in human history that was predominantly protected by memorization. Memorization is a way to create variation, but in the Qur'an's case, memorization became a means by, to create unity and the, lo the lack of variation. What is usually associated with too much variation now became no variation at all, and their only answer to that is, there must be some conspiracy by which they stopped all these other versions from coming out. Can you help me? Is, has there been any other conspiracy where there's no leaks? No leaks. Millions of people 
from different civilizations, memorizing the same exact thing. And Allah saying miraculously, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ We no doubt made the Qur'an easy for remembrance, and for mem- dhikr includes memorization. Allah made it miraculously easy for memorization. Tell me under, any other document that has this kind of preservation. And if they say, we don't know if the Qur'an's preservation is intact, let's put it to the test. Let's put, bring it, make a giant vault, put all the copies of Qur'an in there, get rid of them. How long before in Richardson we come up with a new copy of Qur'an? Through our hafad, in the zip code. We don't even have to go to the next zip code. You can cut off our internet access and phone line too. And how long before they come up with another Bible? Think about it. Uh, even another copy of the United States Constitution. Let's just do that. That's not even thousands of years old. That's a couple of hundred years old. Let's just take it away and let's see if they can come up with it. Word for word. Let's see how long that takes them and how long it takes us to come up with the Quran again. Allah says He preservved it. Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra. He preserved it in a way even if you try to corrupt it. There were attempts to make surah, they, were publish, they publish uh, copies of Quran. It's called Furqan, I think it's called. That's missing some surahs. They say it's the politically incorrect surahs are taken out. And the Muslims are so, how dare they? Don't you have to worry, it's okay. What are they going to do? What they couldn't do for the last 1400 years, when Allah said He protected His word, you think these jokers are going to sell two books at Amazon.com and compete with Quran? Are you kidding me? There's nothing to worry about. Because we're not, as, we're not responsible for guarding this book. Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidhun. It is only we who are taking responsibility of guarding this book. This is Allah's responsibility. And He made it in a way that you just... The only way to get rid of Qur'an is to wipe out the entire population of Muslims from the face of the earth simultaneously. That's the only way. Get rid of one-fifth, one-fourth of the Moors population. That's the only way left to get rid of Qur'an. In other words, over time, documents become less viable, less valid, and this is the only text that only becomes more valid. You know the biblical studies? In biblical studies, did you know that in, in most Bible scholars that are doing PhDs from universities here, Bible scholars, they no longer believe that the Bible is historically accurate. They, they don't believe it. Read, read the talks by Professor Gerald Dirks, on, uh, or listen to his, to his interview at, uh, on... Um, Brother Eddie's show, thedeanshow.com. Listen to it. He's got a master's degree in divinity. This is a gift of Allah to the messenger. You couldn't get rid of this message if you tried.